Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to run a quick demonstration of the self-leveling suspension on my classic car which is the Citroen DS. Now the Citroen DS was what, the first car that ever had proper self-leveling suspension at both the front and rear of the car and uh, you might ask why it needed it even or why any car needs it. The uh, reality is that they wanted to include beautifully soft comfortable suspension on this car and the problem with soft suspension is that when you load the car up, so you put a lot of luggage in the back of the car, or say you load it up with people, then the suspension will deflect and it will hit the end stops and become uncomfortable to ride in. What self-leveling suspension does is it restores that height so that the suspension still has exactly the same travel at both ends of the car. And still used today on a lot of cars, not particularly on Citroens, but a lot of people do it these days, probably computer controlled and sensed by electronic sensors. So this original system uses hydraulics both to raise and lower the car and a mechanical hydraulic system which senses the position of the car and, and keeps it level. I'm going to demonstrate that to you today. So the first thing I need to do is start the car up because the system works from a high pressure pump which is driven by the engine. That provides pressure for the suspension and in this car for other things as well. We're just looking at suspension today. I'm going to start the engine up and then in a few seconds you'll see the car rise to its normal driving position. Well, maybe more than a few seconds. So the back is lifting now. And now the front's lifting. And when it stabilises and reaches its normal working height, then the car will be set. Now, if you loaded some people into the back of the car, the back will drop and the self-leveling will correct for that and lift the back up. I'm going to demonstrate that by standing on the front of the car so you can see an extreme pace. So the car dropped and then as the suspension corrected it came back up again. Now, when I step off, the suspension will rise again because I've removed the weight from the front of the car. So it will rise and then it will correct back down to normal. So it's just dropped back down to normal height again. Now I'll show you the back. So exactly the same. The back goes down when I sit on it, and then when I raise off it again, it lifts up and then corrects back down to normal ride height. And this is great, it means when you're driving your car, it doesn't matter how many people or how much luggage you have in your car, it will always ride at a nice even height. And bear in mind this was system was first used in the 50s. Now as well as being self-leveling, it also has adjustable suspension, so I'll just show you that before I go in close up. The driver can control the height of the car. So it's been in normal ride height, this is now the next position up. So the car will gently lift up slightly, and in this next position, the suspension is slightly higher and slightly harder. Just so. And then the next position up. Now this one is used if you're out and you're stuck in a flood or you need to a lot of ground clearance. So you can just move the car up if the road is rough or something like that. You shouldn't drive it quickly, but you can see the ground clearance has increased quite a lot now. And then this is the very highest position. This is only used for maintenance and changing wheels and that kind of stuff. So you would never drive on this position. You could damage the car if you drove it like this. But it is very useful because it will jack itself up.
just takes a minute to reach that height. And now that it's at that height, there will be no suspension, so I can stand on the front and it won't self-level anymore. It's absolutely solid because it's lifted as far as it can. So now I'll return it to normal ride, right? Drop back to normal. Gently, of course. And then from this position, I'll take you in close up and you can have a look at the mechanism and how it works. The area I'm talking about is just here, just behind the wheel. So this is where the front suspension self-leveling takes place. And then there's a similar mechanism at the back on the left side as well. And that's where the rear self-leveling takes place. We're going to take you in close on this area here so you can see all the linkages moving. So here's that mechanism and I'll just point out a few critical pieces. This item here is a suspension jack and that pushes out or, or pulls back to raise and lower the suspensions. The whole front weight of the car on this side is carried on that suspension jack. So it pushes down on this rod here which is also connected to uh, the other side through an anti-roll bar which is at the bottom here. Now the centre of the anti-roll bar has a lever and that lever comes through to here, which is the height corrector. Now this small item here is determining exactly what height the car will run at. So as the anti-roll bar moves, it, it pushes or pulls on the height corrector and sets the height of the car. So if the anti-roll bar indicates that the average position is too low, then the suspension jack will push a little bit harder and raise the car back up again. And this here is the manual adjust lever, so even this is mechanical and from inside the car I can adjust the height of the car just by pushing a lever which then moves this rod and then that adjusts the resting position of the height corrector. So what I'm going to do next is stand on the car and what you'll see is you'll see the anti-roll bar move as the suspension deflects and then you'll see that the height corrector will adjust the pressure in the jack to lift the car back up to where it should be. So I'll go and stand on the car now. And as I stand off the car again, the car raises and the pressure will drop in this until it's again at the correct height. And this is all done by the height corrector. So the height corrector is determining exactly what height. And of course it's adjustable. One part of the maintenance of this car is that you would have to set the correct ride height on the height corrector at the front and the back, which is done by clamps from underneath the car. So the resting position is quite important, and needs to be set correctly. And I'd probably just add as well, there would normally be a cover over this mechanism. So it isn't normally exposed to the elements like you can see it today. Now in terms of the way that the height corrector works, it's actually quite simple. The height corrector takes pressurised fluid from the hydraulic system and either diverts it into the suspension jacks or returns it from the suspension jacks into the main reservoir. So that's the story of self-leveling suspension and even on a modern car of course it would work the same the height will be sensed by some kind of electronic sensor or sensors and then there'll be an electronic means to adjust probably hydraulic pressures in uh, dampers or jacks to lift the car up and down thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more subscribe to my channel ask Stuart.